As I said, I don't usually get called to talk. It's very novel and interesting for me. I'd like to thank TEDxIIM Bangalore for having invited me here today. Being in music, I very firmly believe in Guru Bin Gyan Nahi Pave. So my namaskars to all the teachers who are here today, and my pranams to all the gurus who have taught us the invaluable truth and shown us the path ahead in life. For a person like me who was born in a middle-class uh, South Indian family in Delhi, it was quite impossible or uh, dream to be in Bollywood. Well, I, my mother was passionately fond of music, and I remember from my childhood, the radio used to be played all the time. And she was very fond of Lata Mangeshkar's songs. So I grew up listening to uh, Bollywood songs. I was in Delhi, so it was mostly Hindi songs that I grew up listening to. And in fact, there was a time when my father would tease my mother because the rice would be burnt on that particular day, and he would say, what, Kamakshi, did you hear a very interesting song from Lataji? And we would know that that's why the rice got burnt. But anyway, I used to hear these songs, and one fine day, I was in Bombay, and I got into uh, music. But there's one thing I particularly noticed when uh, musicians, there was Madhuri Mani Ayer who came to my house and stayed with us because he was related to my mother. But I noticed generally that musicians never talked of money because uh, other musicians considered, it in, considered this to be in kind of bad taste, and managers were allowed to talk about it. And I was also told that um, Saraswati, who is the goddess of wisdom and knowledge, where she resided, normally Lakshmi, who symbolized wealth, didn't walk in because she also brought in quarrel and dissent. I wouldn't know if that's the truth, but I know that both um, Saraswati and Lakshmi have kind of flittered in and out of my life. But the fact remains that I think now we have realized that both Saraswati and Lakshmi had better stay in the homes together. Because art and business is very, very necessary, I guess. I would personally say that art is, you know, that creative part of us which kind of allows us to soar up in the skies. And I read a book called um, uh, on Jonathan uh, Livingston Seagull. And the seagull would fly just not merely to seek food, but to perfect his flying skills, go up higher and higher up in the heaven. And it was kind of a searching for fulfillment of the soul. And I do believe that music is food for our soul. But realistically speaking, it's business that puts the food on the table. I realize that too. But if you look at a lot of corporates and a lot of companies who have forged ahead, I would say that originality and creativity is kind of very important to bring a change in the world. And there are a lot of uh, entrepreneurs who look for originality and creativity. And I would say one of the prime examples is probably Disney. When I think of musicians like um, the Triumvirate in Tiruvayar, when I think of Tansen, and when I think of um, someone like um, Aladdin Baba from Maihar, well, I really never thought about how wealthy they were or what kind of cars they had. But what they have given the, to this world in the form of music is incredible. And they have put their cities in the map of our minds, in the map of the world. And nobody really bothers about what wealth they made, but what they have given the world. And even today, people sing their compositions, and the gharana continues. So looking at that, I would say that creativity and art is a very, very important part of our lives. If you go to the market, you want to buy a car, you just don't buy a box with wheels. You're looking at uh, better designing. You're looking for cars with comfort. There are so many things, fashion, all these kind of things. It's because I think. As human beings, I feel we are always in search for aesthetics, finer emotions. And I would also say that every time we want to better ourselves. And this is where I think creativity comes in. And it's because of this creativity and originality, probably, we've had people contributing to this world, like, or even the scientists, uh, Graham Bell, uh, Einstein, Marie Curie, Leonardo da Vinci, all of them have created such a legacy for us. It's through their creativity. I have met a lot of musicians, artists in my life, 
And I've realized that the traits which are kind of important for uh, the artistic uh, ecosystem, the same traits actually can transcend and everybody can benefit from it. And particularly if I look at <clears throat> the seven uh, notes in music which are so very important to any musician. In Indian music we have um, sa, re, ga, ma, pa, dha, ni, sa. Well, if I compare these traits to, these notes to traits in success, leadership, let me take first, take Sa. In my mind, Sa is the base of the pyramid. In my mind, Sa stands for simplicity and purity. When an artist walks onto the stage and he sings a Sa, you know, if the Sa is very beautiful, if it has got strength and it's got clarity, he's already won the hearts of the audience. In fact, for me, it is true because immediately when the sa is beautiful, when I used to hear Amir Khan Saab and his sa, he would start with a sa, immediately I'm transported into another world. I look at uh, Lata Mangeshkar in her pristine white sari, MS Subalakshmi with her spirituality. Both of them symbolize this sa, this purity, this simplicity, high aesthetics in singing, and both of them have sold millions and millions of records. I remember in Bombay, once I came to Bombay, I met Mr. Amin Sayani, who was from Radio Ceylon, when I was singing in college, and he invited me to his office the very next morning. He said, Aja ye mere office mein. So next morning when we went, he's, he, we, uh, my aunt who brought me to Bombay, she and myself was sitting in front of him. He said, Auntie ji, Aap, why have you brought her to Bombay? You know, do you want to make, like, does she want concerts? I can definitely get her concerts if she wants to make money and you have to live here. So my aunt said, no, I have not brought her here to make money. I want her to learn the skills of playback singing. I want her to learn how to sing. If she has perfected that art of learning how to sing film songs very well, money will find her. I don't need to run after that. I think that's the truth, that you, the more you perfect your skill and your art, other things will slowly come onto your table. If I go to Re, Re stands for relativity for me. If there is a Sa, then I look at Re and I say it's a minor Re or a major Re, I compare it to Sa. The material is the same, but how would I, it shows me adaptability and flexibility. I have a song here, which is a same seven notes, a happy song, and in the same film, there is a sad version of the same song. And there's also a duet version of the same song. It's the same song, but it has to be handled differently. It's like, let's say, the note of a raga. If, let's say, there is a ga somewhere, it can be, in a rag bhupali, it can be a major note. But in another rag, it can be just a passing note. So it's the same note, how you deal with it differently how the music director wants you to sing the song. At the same time, as the music director is asking you to sing the song in a particular way, the director will say, this is my concept, and, this is the, and you know the actresses, how the actress's voice sounds and how she's going to emote that song. So keeping all this in mind, you have to be very adaptable and very flexible. I remember once I <coughs> went to sing for a music director called Opie Nair, and when I was singing the song for him, it so happened that I had been singing a lot of songs for Lakshmi Kant Pyaralal, so there was a certain inflection which probably came even without my thinking. So when I sang that song for him and when I was rehearsing that song, so before I went to the mic, he said, Beta, aap Opinayar ka gana ga rahe ho. You're singing the song of Opinayar. Please remember that. I'm hearing colors of Lakshmi Kant in your voice, but you have to remember you're singing Opinayar songs. But for me, the song was the same. It's just that how I had used the embellishment or certain, certain grace notes that come in a song. So I think re, relativity, is very, very important. It's the same material which you are selling to different clients. How would you go about changing your attitudes with the same stuff and how you would sell it to different people so that they buy it? Because commercial success for a song is very, very important too. Ga, in my mind, stands for guru. We all learn from someone. It could be an educational establishment. 
It could be a guru, music guru. It could be a friend. It could be somebody teaching you in the family, teaching you the business skills. We all have our mentors. And without those mentors and gurus, it's very difficult to go ahead in life. After Ga, I would go to Ma. Ma, in my mind, stands for musicianship, where you sit alone with yourself. You've learned whatever your taught, guru has taught you, you've learned verbatim. You've learned verbatim to sing exactly like that because you're trying to handle it. You're learning verbatim, but slowly as you practice it and practice it and practice it, there are some new phrases that come into your mind. There are a little bit of new improvisations that come into the composition, and slowly the raga evolves the way you would probably sing it. And you're honing your skills. You're perfecting the art. You're honest to yourself. There is quality at that point. I think, and then finally, last but not the least, you know those hours that you've sat alone perfecting your skill? I think somewhere as a musician also, you, uh, you internalize all that stuff. And when you do that, what comes out later on is definitely very creative and reflects your own personality. Let me go to Pa. Pa stands for passion. I can't really imagine sitting and pouring hours and hours and hours of doing something that I don't like to do. But if it was music, and if somebody said, OK, you sit, your parents say you sit for so many hours, you won't do it. But if it comes from within you, your parents don't have to say that. Your guru doesn't have to say it. You will sit alone, and you'll work on it. And you won't even realize that you've spent so many hours over it. I think passion and creativity are great moving forces. And I think it's because of this passion we've had people who've created you know, ancient, all those ancient heritage buildings that we see. And we see uh, the stands for dhairya in my mind. Dhairya, courage. First, to choose to be in the line of music, to be a professional musician. I think it needs courage, because there's no guarantee that you're going to make money. There's no guarantee for success that even you'll make a name for yourself. But you're there because of passion and love for it. And you really don't care how much money you're going to make or how famous you're going to be. But you, there's nothing else that you want to do with your life. So you need a certain amount of courage to take a step like that. And I will also say that once you're walking the path of music, you know, the challenges never stop. You can't say I'm a successful musician, therefore I've done it. I don't need to do anything new. No, the path continues and the challenges are always there in front of you. After the, we come to Ni. Ni in Tamil means you. What are you doing in music? Is the song that you're singing, does it suit your personality? You conceptualize a song, you record a song, you decide who the singers are going to be, you compose, you record, and nowadays young musicians are independent musicians. They also have to edit their songs themselves, they also have to shoot the songs, and then they have to sit and think how they're going to release the song in the market. So they're really like a marketing team, and they are YouTubers now. So they plan so many things all on their own. It's not very different from business, because ultimately, you want the success of this song. There are so many steps to take before you actually come to that point where you are you know, releasing the song, and it's a success in the market. And then, like the Beatles, maybe you'll make millions. Hmm? Hopefully not like Van Gogh, who died in penury. The paintings were sold for millions after he died. So there are so many aspects of releasing music today. And I think everything depends on that young musician today. He has to do everything for himself. He's an entire marketing team. And also the decision of what singers to take is also very important. I was just talking to somebody, and I said, supposing you took the Padosan song. I don't know how many of you have heard the Padosan song. But if you heard the song in Padosan, there is a part which Mannade sings, and there's a part which Kishore Kumar sings. And I think what disaster it would have been if the roles had been inversed the voices would have not sounded the same. So for a music director to realize what voices to choose for that particular scene is also very important. And then I finally come to Sa. Sa has got, also got the leadership qualities. 
I think life is all about passion and creativity. And I firmly believe that faith also conquers. And when you work with this kind of passion and creativity, like I told you earlier, all these wonderful things happen. There are great paintings. There's Bach, Beethoven, Tyagaraja, Tansen. You have the Great Wall of China. You have the Leaning Tower of Pisa. All these things which have come out of passion. And then we have this beautiful world we live in. It's not utilitarian. We're not thinking of things. Uh, you know, we're not saying we're living a daily life, you know, in a very dark, dingy place. We can still live our lives there. But why do we have beautiful sunrise? Why do we look at beautiful sunsets? Why are there lakes, mountains, and stars? This is innate longing for us for higher aesthetic spinal emotions. Whatever money we make, this, these emotions cannot be taken away from a human being. And last but not the least, we have this creator who's made this magnificent thinking man whose left side is logical and his right side is creative. I would say let's teach our children to use both sides of this brain so that Lakshmi and Saraswati can reside in their homes. Thank you.